What's going on? It's the Rap Nerd, and I just got out of seeing one of the most hyped horror films of the year released by Neon called Long Legs. Now, this movie is directed by Oswald Perkins, starring Micah Monroe and Nick Cage playing the serial killer known as Long Legs. So, the first thing you want to know is this movie worth the hype? Is it the scariest film of the year? I'm going to answer that right now, and this movie is definitely worth the hype. Now, as far as if it's the scariest film of the year, I think it's going to be subjective for me. It's definitely top three. I'll say that. I don't know where it falls, but it is the, it's, it's in the top three scariest films that I've seen this year because this movie gave me a damn near anxiety attack. Like, I need to go take some Tums because my anxiety right now is through the roof. Micah's character named Lee is a detective. She is on the hunt for long legs because there have been so many murders happening on birthdays. And we're talking about like families being murdered, not just one pe one person. Multiple families being murdered on birthdays and she's chosen to help bring long legs in because she's skilled at it. What I love about the story too is it takes something that is pretty common. Like we see the tech story. We see murder serial killer stories. I mean, so two of the best for me are Seven and of course... Silence of the Lambs and Zodiac. We've seen a lot of these, right? But it still manages to carve a lane on its own to make it its own thing while borrowing from some of those. I don't even know how long the film is. I, I didn't look or keep up with time. But from the start of the movie to the end of the movie, this thing has an atmosphere that is so uncomfortable, so eerie, so scary as you you know dive deeper into what's going on. I'm trying to figure out even how to put this in words, man. Like in bodybuilding, right? When you lift weights and you strength train to help build your nervous system, they're gonna they always say there's this thing called time under tension. You know, it puts a lot of stress on nervous system. Well, that's what this movie is. It's time under tension. Oswald Perkins, from a direction standpoint, destroyed this film. Like the cinematography, the sound design, the color palette, every little technical aspect about the film from a filmmaking standpoint direction works its way and complements the film so much and just makes you feel on your toes every single second of the film and that's why i say my anxiety is so high there are a lot of wide shots to where characters are in a room and the shot is wide so you see everything you see every single doorway you see every single mirror you see everything and as you're sitting there looking you're like wondering, is there something there the whole time? And it's done so beautifully that sometimes stuff is there, sometimes stuff isn't. And I want to rewatch the movie just for that because there are certain sequences where I was like, wait a fucking minute, what is that? And ew, like I saw a review saying this movie gets under your skin. And this movie definitely got under my skin. Oh my God. Oh, oh. Shit, I'm thinking, I'm getting goosebumps thinking. One thing that this film does with the camera movement is it's very static. There are a whole bunch of still framing and shit's just going on. Characters are walking back and forth and in and out of rooms, but it just keeps the frame static on what you're looking at and it holds it. You're just kind of like, what the fuck's about to happen? And the character will walk in the room and, and you know, the scene will continue or it'll be a static shot held for about 10 seconds, goes to the next scene. It's just like, why are you fucking with me? My tension is through the roof right now. Why do you keep doing this to me? But you want that in a horror movie, so great way to do it. And all of the movement is pretty smooth. Like, like, like there's a lot of dolly shots. And oh, like, 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 like the stillness of the cinematography makes the movie even more terrifying. I'll say that. And there are even certain points where the aspect ratio kind of changes for certain reasons in the film. And once that point happens and it changes you already know you're in for some shit just because of the way the first the, the first five minutes of the film started like i said the first three to five minutes of the movie had my entire crowd on our feet like something happened and then it and then the title card read and you could just hear people like whoa shit whoa and you know that ominous small talk amongst people and the way the movie is lit is is, is beautiful too it utilizes uh, a, a lot of natural lighting from what I can see, there you know it's shot in a lot of natural places that don't look like a set design. Besides, maybe a few places, I would imagine a, a few certain points are definitely on the soundstage. But for the most part, it feels like the movie shot in real locations and they use real light. But it's just again 
the, the, the framing of the shot just makes it gorgeous using that rule of threes and being able to, you know, to set the camera in the right place. You can, you can get a beautiful frame anywhere. And that's kind of what the movie did. So it just did an incredible job with the way it's lit. So on to the performances. Micah Monroe's performance here, she has a lot of heavy lifting with her body and her, you know, the way she speaks through her body, body language, if you will. And she is able to convey a high level of anxiety throughout the film. And that made me be anxious as well. Like they do a really good job with the sound design. Like when shit happens and she's kind of searching for stuff. And there are a lot of moments when she's walking around like a house or a location pointing her gun and she's breathing heavily. And I can tell that they redubbed it to be louder, but you just hear her going like, <sighs> and it's loud enough to where you're like there with her. And, and, and then the, the way the cinematography is set up, when you follow her, it just, you, you experience how she's feeling to the T and it makes it scarier because you don't know what's going to be happening and what's around the, oh my God, like, oh, I, I, I'm telling you, this movie scared the shit out of me, like, just the way she, she is, like, there's some things that, like, the camera will just be on her and you'll hear things, but you don't see it and you'll just see her face just like, like quivering, breathing heavily, and just doing little nuances with her body, like her shoulders kind of shrugging, and, and you can see her jet. Oh my gosh, she she did an incredible job, to say the least. This movie doesn't work without her. Like she's the reason for a lot of this working the way it was. Like it is. She's a modern day screen queen for a reason because this shit was incredible. Now on the Nick Cage as long legs. His look, his voice is so disturbing that every time a piece of him is on screen, because they do a good, great job of it, they kind of hide him in the film so you see him, but you don't get to see him in totality. And as the movie kind of progresses, you know, you get to see him more. And before you even get to see his face, just hearing him and talk and shit that he's saying, it just creeps me the fuck out. Oh, God, it creeps me out. And then when you actually get to see him, his look is so disturbing. I don't even want to look at it. Like, I, like anytime he was on screen, I was just sitting here like, this is this is not right. This is not okay. Like, why does he look this way? This is not okay. This is not right. And, and it's just... It's fantastically done. I can't say it enough. This movie got under my skin. Like, I'm kind of shook right now sitting in this dark-ass car in my garage because of what this movie did. And the great thing about it is, once you start digging deeper into the story and you start to figure out what's going on and more is revealed, it gets even more fucked up. And that's what really got me scared because what we don't see in the trailer and what you don't know makes the movie even scarier. Like, once you, like, again delve into it and just the concepts of what they chose to do and again it's all about concept and execution and bringing something fresh a fresh take on something this takes something that we are aware of and have seen a number of times but just recontextualizes it to fit the story and adds its own secret little flavor in it and what they did with this the thing that happens in the film i thought was masterful and it made it scary and again it it, it retroactively makes the rest of the movie that much better and even more scary because there are things that happen in the beginning that you're kind of like what's that about you know and like i said you think you may see stuff but you're not really sure but when you get to the third act you're like okay so i wasn't tripping i did see this and this is why this is happening and then it's, it, it's just magnificently done I, I i i'm i'm blown away by what they did here so if you've seen long list what do you think about the film did you find it scary did you not if you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you already are subscribed, thank you. And until next time, peace. Rap Nerd Productions, no capping, that's word to mommy.